Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today this is, well, this video is my state of the collection. Uh, I don't really like doing these videos, but uh, a couple of folks have asked me to do it, so uh, here it is. Um, am I done with the watch collecting? Uh, no, I kind of want to be, but uh, but I'm not done. I Well, I need to sell some stuff. Is there anything out there that I want to buy? Um, yeah, there is, but... Um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm kind of at a um, midpoint in my watch collecting uh, here and um, maybe a little burned out. I don't know. But um, this is a watch I've been wearing, um, I would say, the most. You can see it's running. I just put it back in here for the video. So actually, I'll put this on wrist. Uh, Rolex. So Mariner 124060. Um, I don't think I have time to show all these on wrist because I have uh, a bunch of other watches to show as well. So uh, let's just stop. Let's just stop. Let's start from the top left and uh, carry on. So this is the Tudor uh, date day. It's actually a Rolex Tudor. It has a Rolex uh, on the crown there. No focus or not, but uh, hopefully you can see the crown there. Rolex crown on the Tudor. Uh, this is from the 90s, I believe. I don't think I'll ever sell this one. Uh, the um, plexiglass crystal, acrylic crystal. So yeah, I think it's a cool watch. Uh, here is my first luxury watch that I have purchased from an AD. And I don't foresee this leaving my collection. This is uh, for sure one of my favorite watches. Tudor Black Bay 58. Yeah, paid uh, full retail for this. Uh, taxes, everything. So... I really don't see this leaving the collection. Probably my second most worn watch. Uh, these two among my favorite watches for sure. Um, this one here, Zen U50, 500 meter water resistance, nice and thin, 11 millimeter thin, um, tegumented bracelet case, and the bezel is tegumented as well uh, with the black coating. This is the SDR version of the Zen U50. Need to wear this more and um i think going forward well if i had this thought for a while too but i'm going to try to limit my collection to one watch per brand so i say that because i have another zen here which i haven't really worn um, i need to wear these watches more often zen uh, 105 utc is a bi-directional bezel uh, cool watch it does have a uh, piece of dirt or dust or something attached to the bottom of the crystal there uh, straight from the factory uh zen didn't really want to warranty that for me so i don't know a little disappointed in that uh this watch here my stova marine original i purchased this watch four or five years ago i, I wanted this watch for the longest time um geez maybe 10 years i wanted this watch i purchased it and I really haven't worn it. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's why this hobby, I don't know, it's starting to get to me a little bit. But um, sometimes I feel like it's just more about the hunt than actually getting the watch. I purchased this one used, so it's got some scuffs and stuff on it. But uh, I really like hand wind mechanical movements. Uh, you can see, especially with the display case back, that you can see everything going on in here. Yeah, just something special about that. Uh, problem with this watch is I feel like it's a tad bit too big for my wrist. Uh, I think this is going to be a very long video, but uh, I just can't just can't talk for only 30 seconds per watch. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, I need to wear this one some more too. And this is the Stova strap. So yes, I do like German watches. Supposedly my some of my family heritage is German. I don't know, but Let's put that one back in there. So here we have another Stova uh, This is the Antia 390 so 39 millimeter I bought this one used as well And this is hand winding only but this is actually a um, uh, automatic movement They remove the rotor from it So, 
39 sounds like it would fit good for, for my wrist, but the lugs are really long on this, and that's just the typical Bauhaus styling. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I'll sacrifice the background there. So, cool watch. Probably sell this one too. I'll just a quick look at it on my wrist. Uh, there you go. You can see how long the lugs are on this. It's just, I mean, that's how the Bauhaus watches are. I don't know if I necessarily really care for that look. So anyway, let's get that back on the cushion. Um, and actually getting this case out, I noticed one of my quartz watches, watches, the battery is dead, so I'll need to get that replaced. May or may not do that myself. So this watch too, I've wanted for the longest time forever. And I have worn this watch quite a few times, but uh, I really don't wear it enough. This thing too is super light. Titanium, every time I take it out of the case, it surprises me. Oh, I have to unwind it. Um, I have to un unscrew the screw down crown. That didn't work either. But anyway, it has the spring drive, the um, snowflake dial, SBGA211. Okay, there we go, it's moving a little bit. Uh, I really like the spring drive, it's mesmerizing and the finishing on this thing is amazing. I also purchased this watch used uh, a number of years ago. See, I need to wear this more often too. That's that's the thing. I you know I have this collection here and really don't wear them enough. This other watch, I was meaning to sell it before the battery had died. It's quartz, so the battery's gonna die eventually, and uh, didn't quite make it. Um, so yeah, now I need to replace the battery on this. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna attempt that myself or not. I might, I might call around and uh, see how much it'll cost to get a watchmaker to do it. Cool watch. Um, I've liked these for a long time. I had the opportunity to add this to my collection and I did. Looks very reminiscent to me of the Rolex Explorer 2. This 39 millimeter watch. Sorry about that. Hit the camera there. Um, I think it looks good on my six and a half inch wrist. But I'm really just not into, I'm not into quartz watches. They're fine. Uh, yeah, this is super accurate. I think 10 or 15 seconds per year, but um, you know, I, I just don't really care about that. I like the mechanical movements. I like the spring drive. So here, another Grand Seiko. So I have three Grand Seikos in my collection currently. 36 millimeter. I've been meaning to sell this one as well. It's a little bit thick for my preference. I think it's 13 mil thick, uh, 36 diameter. Remember how long the lugs are. But beautifully finished movement on this guy here. Yeah, I, I always think I'm going to sell these things and I get them out and get them in hand and I think I'm crazy for wanting to sell it. Uh, I did buy this watch used and uh, it does have a nick right there. But other than that, this thing is like an amazing condition so yeah anyway uh, problem with the Grand Seikos uh, at least these ones that I have is there's no micro adjustment on the bracelet you do get a half link but again no micro adjustment so always end up wearing them a little bit loose this is one of my favorite Seiko watches right here the um, SPB 149, I believe. I wish they would put the, the um, model number on the back of these or something. So, very nice watch. Um, I would like it more on a strap than a bracelet, and I'm a bracelet guy. This bracelet kind of sucks. Get this stupid diver extension in there, and it just makes the clasp super long and huge. And uh, it's a little painful at first on my wrist, but other than that, I really like this watch. I like the size, I like the look. I think it's a good value for the price. It's a little bit thick, but it's a dive watch, so that's to be expected. And you do get the drill lugs there. I think this one will be in the collection for a while. You need to find a different strap or something to put this on. This 
So the Rolex, my Samariner was there. Um, I'd like to sell this one this year as well. Actually, I have it on an aftermarket bracelet right now. I'm not a fan of this on the factory bracelet. The aftermarket bracelet has improved the, uh, the feel of it. Um, the look too, I like the look of this one a little more. You know, I really just, I like this one so much that um, the Seamaster just, I really wanted to like the Seamaster, but it just it just doesn't do it for me. Um, I need to do a video with this watch and, uh, and, and sell it, but the things I do like is I like the dial and I like how tall those indices are. But other than that, you know, that's about it for me. It's a great watch though. Uh, let me put it on my wrist. I have a few more boxes to go through here. So if you want me to go through any of these in more detail, uh, let me know in the comment section. I can try and do a, a follow-up video. Uh, this is the Uncle, well, Uncle Seiko, but they changed their name to Uncle Straps. Probably got in trouble with Seiko. And uh, there is that logo there for Uncle Straps. All right, let's put this down. Do you have some watches on the table here actually let's go through them real quick i don't really consider these to be a part of my collection you know i buy watches for video content um i might slow down on that just so i can you know really enjoy these watches more i just i don't enjoy them as much as i used to i don't think i even sized this one yet for my wrist i need to get this one sized and uh spend some time with it and uh, get a good video done Seiko Speed Timer. Let's see. What else do I have over here? I have this guy. I think this is the SBSA113. I really like this watch. I bought this direct from uh, Japan. I think it was Seiya Japan I bought it from, or Sakura, Sakura, Seiya. I, I don't remember. But uh, cool watch. I have it on the Artem strap right now. The uh, factory bracelet kind of sucks for this. But yeah, cool watch. And it does have the kanji date wheel. Since it is the a Japanese model. Uh, I need to do a video on this too. Got um, Clockwork Republic rubber strap on this. And this is the uh, SRPC91, I think. Um, I like the dials on turtles, but... The cases are a little bit too big for me. And I don't like them on bracelet. I, I prefer them on a strap. All right, so here is, I've had this watch for 10, somewhere between 10 and 15 years. I've worn it quite a bit. It's got some battle scars on it. Uh, never had it serviced. And uh, I bought it used from eBay uh, back then, so probably way overdue for a service but uh, I think it works pretty well I haven't worn it in about two years two three years though since I started the channel yeah maybe it does need a servicing oh there we go I like the four on that yeah Oris day date I think this is my first Swiss uh, watch that I purchased okay what else do I have on here Oh yeah, my Hamilton Murph. This was my uh, purchase. I purchased this last year. Bought it from uh, Salzman's Watches. Actually, I have a discount code for Salzman's Watches. Uh, maybe I'll try and put that in the description. But uh, they still should still have these, 25% off. I want to get this on a different strap and uh, try wearing it on a different strap. 38 millimeter watch. Really like this one. Hey, what else do I have on here? SKX should be on here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I think this was my first. I don't I can't remember anymore, but I've had this one for 13, 14 years. I don't know if it was my first automatic watch or not. But yeah, still in the collection, and uh, this isn't going to leave. The Oris isn't going to leave. So I do have some keepers. Just need to decide what is going to stay as a keeper. 
Um, I think that's about it on the table here. So let me grab another box. All right, so uh, Pagani Design. You know, I just bought this to, to try it out for the size. I think it's uh, one to one for the size to the Explorer 2, but I think the new one's just a tad bit too large for me. And I'm trying to, um, I'm looking for a, a 16570, but with the black dial, not with the white dial. So I need to video that and get rid of it. Uh, this is uh, my Van Banner. VBAO. I really like this watch. Um, I didn't buy this one. It was um, sent to me in exchange for video, but you can see I have been wearing it. Actually, this had a brief interaction with a, with a brick wall, which you can see right there. And um, yeah, a little bit of scratching on there. So this one will stay in the collection. Beautiful dial on this guy here. I hope they make some more of them. Uh, to sell, explore. You know, I had one, I sold it, and then I bought another one. But I'll probably be selling this one off too. I'll be selling this guy too. Uh, Devil Diver. It's called the Devil Diver because the depth rating is uh, 666 feet. Which I think, I don't mean, know, 150 meters or something like that. But uh, yeah, you know, I just haven't worn this thing either. Bought this used. Uh, Armida. I had a handful of these Explore homages. This is 36 millimeter. Real nice specs on this one. I think the new ones now have uh, a Swiss movement. This has a Miyota 9039, I believe. My only real complaint about this thing is that it's too thick. I think it's 14 and a half millimeter thick, something like that. But it has great specs, 300 meter water resistance, uh, anti-magnetic, all that good stuff, which I really don't need. I just want a nice, small, everyday, go anywhere, do anything watch. But yeah, cool watch. All right, let's move on to the next case. All right, let's take a look at this. This is, I don't know, just another case I have full watches I need to sell. I actually have another case over here I don't think I'm even going to talk about because that case is my uh, for sale watches and anything I put in there I don't consider part of my collection anymore. This is actually a Porter G-Shock. I paid way too much for this so I just need to uh, sell it and uh, take the loss on it. I don't wear it. But cool watch. I think it's a special or limited edition. the 2020 minus 35 I don't know what is that uh, 75 years whatever it's, it's a certain year anniversary uh, this guy I bought to compare to a Seiko Willard I think I do have a Seiko Willard I don't even know but uh, I haven't worn this thing either uh, again need to video this and, uh, and get it out the door for my own sanity, need to reduce this collection size. But yeah, I do have a, a steel dive watch, at least one. I'm not against buying homage watches. I just, I don't know. I have mixed feelings on homage watches. So, uh, some kind of Casio G-Shock. Forgot the model number on it. Again, need a video and, and uh, just get it out of here, so. If you're interested in any of these watches, feel free to send me an offer or email me. Not really meant to be a for sale video, but um, you know I just have too many watches. This thing, I really like this watch too. Yeah, it fits my wrist great. It's a little bit smaller of a watch. A sapphire crystal, in-house automatic movement. I think this is, uh, I don't know, is it is it the Komatsu or is it the Mako 3 USA? I don't remember. And the actual model number, I have no idea. The, the Orient model numbers are a bunch of different numbers and letters, and it's not so easy to remember. But yeah, cool watch. Really like this one. The bracelet's a little bit thick, though. Be nice if it tapers some more, but at least you do get some micro adjust. 
uh, Seiko Mini Turtle. You know, I think I bought a bracelet for this somewhere. I don't know if I opened that yet. I need to find that package. I think it's a good size watch. A 20 millimeter lug width. It's a little bit, a little bit different looking. And this is the patty version. So I think that's uh, Hasselite crystal. It does have that kind of a funny cyclops there. And then I do have a patty monster here. Yep, I had a patty turtle. I actually sold that, believe it or not, sold a watch. Um, you know, I'm just not into monsters anymore. So probably selling this. And I have, I think this is a third or fourth gen monster. And I have a second gen monster. Uh, and that one is a SRPC 315. This one I don't remember, but um, yeah, cool watch. I like the coloring on it. I just don't wear it. Oh, it has that same stupid dive extension. Should be 20 millimeter lug width, and then the bracelet here kind of blossoms out. So, neat little trick there. But I do like that anodized. I don't know if that's anodized actually. That should be stainless steel. I'm not sure how they blew that. Anodization would be for aluminum. Um, this is the Worn and Wound Special Edition. Probably not going to stay in my collection. Uh, Laurier. I like the watch, but again, I'm, I'm just not wearing it, so it's going to be leaving after I video it. But this is a super compressor style watch. It's not an actual super compressor. Yeah, you can see there it's the Worn and Wound um, Limited Edition. So, looks very nice. And these bracelets are very comfortable. I've had a couple different Laurier watches that have come and gone. And uh, I, I really like their watches. I would like them more. I would like them more if they had sapphire crystals, though. Oh, let's see. SRPC. No. SKX013, and it has a, a different bezel insert in here. I think I have the original one somewhere. Actually, I think this is a French date wheel. Let's see. Um, it's an Uncle Seiko bracelet, but it doesn't fit on here very well. I think I have the original strap, but I need to sell this thing too. I just don't wear it. Maybe this isn't the French date wheel. Merde? Do you? Yeah, maybe this is French. I don't know. It's not Spanish. Okay, last watch in this box is, um, I wouldn't say it's rare, but uh, you don't see these too often. It's uh, SKX171. I was going to do a Marine Master um, mod with this. Basically, you can just swap the bezel because you have that black date wheel there. I think you got to swap the hands and stuff too, but uh, this is, you know, it's got some wear on it, but um, I think it's in pretty decent condition. Uh you know, I might have to sell this one too. I don't have to, but I kind of want to for my own sanity. Just really get the collection down. All right, I think I have one more box. Yeah, we'll just do. We'll just do one more box, the sales box. I'll do a sales video one of these uh, days here and uh, get those watches sold here, hopefully. All right, here we go. This is the uh, last box for this video. I actually do have, believe it or not, I do have more watches, but um, I think this will do it for this video. So I think I bought this just before I started the channel. I really like this watch. It's a little bit, again, too big for my wrist, but um, it was as close as I was gonna get at that point in my life. This is as close as I was gonna get to an Omega Speedmaster, but uh, I will add one to my collection. Yeah, it's funny, you know, I'm talking about getting rid of watches and then adding watches, but um, I, ha I need to have a Speedmaster. It's, uh, I've been a fan of NASA forever, so. And then I don't know if I'll sell this one or not. I might. Yeah, actually, I must have, 
I think my wrist might be a little bit smaller than when I uh, first got this watch and sized it. But uh, again, a butterfly clasp, which I don't care for. And you know, I don't know if this one has half links or not. So that might be why it's a little bit large. Marine Master 300. I've had this for a little while. Really haven't even sized it yet. I, I have it on. I have a bracelet for it, and then I have this rubber, uh, Crafter Blue rubber strap for it with the Marine Master ratchet adjustable clasp. Oh yeah, that's right. It's kind of backwards. You just have to push this forward, and then you can pull that out. So maybe it's not backwards, but um, I would expect if you pull this, you could pull that. But anyway, um, the strap is, is still too big for my wrist. But if I cut the strap, then it's probably going to be too small for the next guy's wrist that buys it. So, anyway. Um, yeah, it's a bit thick. But iconic Seiko watch. This probably will not stay in my collection. But it's super, really cool. Super cool watch. Okay, this is, I always get this mixed up. It's either a DA46 or a DA42, the Moscow um, ice hardened steel. So it has to have the iron core. So it's anti-magnetic because of the ice hardened steel. Let me rephrase that. It needs to have an iron cage because of the ice hardened steel. So that iron cage inside makes it anti-magnetic. So this is the D, oh, where is it at? Maybe you guys can see it. Oh, right there. DA46. But uh, this, I don't know it was on the crystal there, but this watch has one of the best, if not the best bezel actions in my collection. It's a uh, ceramic bearing. Very definite clicks here. I would really like this in a different colorway, and I would like it with the timing bezel instead of the um, dual time bezel. Now, by different colorway, I mean with just uh, the all white hands. I think this red hand was like a special option or something. And this is a Strap Seeker uh, Lucas strap. I didn't put this back on the leather strap yet. And I also do have a bracelet for this. I really don't care for that bracelet, though. But I am a big fan of, again, German watches, and uh, I am a fan of Damasco. I do have some more Damascos, but um, we'll talk about those in another video, different another day. Uh, this one, I actually need to sell this. I videoed it uh, a while ago. I have another Yama somewhere that I want to compare to this, and then once I do that, I'll, I'll sell this one. But pretty cool watch, Yama Pearl Diver. I just don't care for the mixture of the cream and the white. And then that has a um, acrylic crystal as well. I had a few different tunas over the years. I had the uh, SBBN039, which was the Patty edition, the previous generation. Then I had a SBBN, I forgot the number, but it was a yellowfin tuna. Um, I had to sell that off too. But um, I do have this one in the collection, Sapphire Crystal. And then I think there's a PVD bezel. Stainless steel with the PVD coating, maybe. I could be wrong. But yeah, tuners are very cool. And we'll wrap up this video here with my Helios uh, Fairwind. This is a cool watch. Uh, it's really nice for a micro brand watch. It has the on the fly a micro adjustment. You don't need to remove the watch from your wrist to do it. You can just push this button in and then uh, pull it out. I don't know if you can push it in. No, you got to push the button to pull, pull and push it out. But very nice watch. Nice bezel action. Bi-directional. Just a timing bezel so it doesn't... You know, a dive watch, I really don't care if it does have... Uh, if it only has unidirectional. I prefer the bi-directional. But it's not going to make or break this, this deal for me either way. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've worn this watch. 
I would have preferred it with the um, the ceramic bezel insert. I don't really like stainless steel bezel inserts, but I bought this one used, got a pretty good deal on it, so I had to snap it up. I might have just tightened it too much for my wrist, so yeah, so let's just, well, I don't know if it's supposed to fly out like that, but very slick system. So yeah, I just pushed it in and it moved out a little bit. And there we go on my six and a half inch wrist with the 52 millimeter wristband. So that will conclude this video. If you made it to the end, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on doing the entire collection, but um, <clears throat> just figured we would talk about it here for 30, uh, over 30 minutes. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I uh, still have, uh, I have plans for many videos this year. And hopefully in, uh, in the many years to follow. I am still uh, enjoying this hobby for the most part. But um, just need to make some changes here and reduce the collection. So that will conclude this video. As always, thank you for your time and thank you for watching.